Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel, but today I have a limited edition book box to share with you that's been sent to me for review and photography. It is going to be a bit of a rough one though because of course it is from Down the Rabbit Hole book box which always features darker reads. So we get some thrillers, we get some good old Agatha Christie mysteries, but we also get a lot of horror, we get a lot of gore, and that was definitely the case with this one. Although Although it was a very thought-provoking translated novel. You may have actually heard of it. It is called Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Bastarica and it was very very interesting to me. It was a little bit uh, nauseating at points but it was also definitely a social commentary. I believe she's an Argentinian writer. I thought it was pretty interesting but I was very glad when the uh, about 200 pages of a lot of um, basically cannibalism were over. Now this was, like I said, a limited edition box, so it was a little bit pricier than the monthly box. The monthly box is $49.99, and if you are interested in subscribing, you can actually save 15% on your first box using my code, which is Noel15. But these limited edition boxes, she usually does one every single quarter. They're different prices, they're different books. This was the spring one, and I believe it was $89.99 plus shipping. It included nine gifts. Now I will say that some of the gifts were more like paper gifts, gifts that definitely sort of enhance the reading experience but aren't necessarily things that you would use in your daily life and that is what I usually like about the monthly box but let's go ahead and get into it like I said it is kind of a rough one but I wanted to share it with you now I do think it's really cool that she does different box designs for the limited edition they are changing up the box design I'm a little bit bummed I really like this floral D that they had versus the bunny that's sort of like gnawing on a skull in all honesty but of course we've got some blood splatter here. She's got some all kinds of uh, details on the interior of these limited edition boxes so you get that bull head. We have a quote, the human being is the cause of all evil in this world. We are our own virus and so again social commentary for sure especially concerning recent events. And then you can see in the bottom here, we even have like sort of a butcher block. She has so many details. There's like a knife and uh, like a cut of meat and everything. So I do admire the thought that goes into all of these limited edition boxes. Not necessarily something that I would want prominently displayed in my home because I think people already think I'm a little bit weird for listening to a lot of true crime, but I do think it's really cool that she puts all that effort into the design of the boxes. So included as well as the book, of course, we had an inspired playlist with a QR code. We had our usual um, brochure. This time it doesn't have a hint as the title of the box. It's actually the title of the book. And then we do have a little information about the author as usual, which I always find pretty interesting. I didn't actually read about it, but she did re uh, receive some awards, I believe, for this particular book because it is just so so dark but also so interesting so let me go ahead and read to you and we did get a bookmark as well just with some blood spatter on there let me go ahead and read to you the uh little the blurb that gets us started and then i will read the passages that go along with the gifts and uh hopefully we can get through it together so all right so it says Working at the local processing plant, Marcos is in the business of slaughtering humans, though no one calls them that anymore because you have to distance yourself, right? So it doesn't seem so awful. His wife has left him, his father is sinking into dementia, and Marcos tries not to think too hard about how he makes a living. After all, it happened so quickly. First, it was reported that an infectious virus has made all animal meat poisonous to humans. Then, governments initiated the transition. Now eating human meat, special meat, is legal. Marcos tries to stick to numbers, consignments, processing. Then one day he's given a gift, a live specimen of the finest quality. Though he's aware that any form of personal contact is forbidden on pain of death, little by little he starts to treat her like a human being. And soon he becomes tortured by what has been lost and what still might be saved. So it's very very dark. I mean, I had to, of course, this is definitely um, a book that the vegans probably wouldn't want to read. It definitely makes you consider being a vegan. It's, um, it's very, very interesting. So let's go ahead and get to our first one. So let's see. The first one came on page 10 
And uh, this is what it looks like when you come across a page. There's a little sticky note, and like I said, I will go ahead and read it. I'm not going to necessarily read it in an accent or anything because it has been translated into English from Spanish, but let me see if I can remember what the gift is that goes along with it. All right, so he works in basically a processing plant, and he is visiting a tannery that's run by a Japanese man. So this is our... our Marcos. It says, he enters the tannery and feels something strike him in the chest. It's the smell of the chemicals that halt the process of skin decomposition. It's a smell that chokes him. The employees work in complete silence. At first glance, it seems almost transcendental, a zen-like silence. But it's Senor Urami who's observing them from up in his office. Not only does he watch his employees and monitor their work, he has cameras all over the tannery because, yes, they use every part of these, um... These heads is what they call them instead of calling them humans or animals. So he goes up to Senor Urami's office. There's never a wait. Invariably, two Japanese secretaries greet him and serve him red tea in a transparent mug, not bothering to ask if he'd like any. He thinks that Senor Urami doesn't look at people, but instead measures them. The owner of the tannery is always smiling, and he feels that when this man observes him, what he's really doing is calculating how many meters of skin he can remove in one piece if he slaughters him, flays him, and removes his fl flesh on the spot. So that's the kind of book it is, you guys. So we got a little envelope with a sticker that says gift one. So let me go ahead and reopen this. Uh, this is one of those boxes where you're like, please don't be too literal with the gifts. They are not too literal. We got some tea. This is Med Tea Cult Sage Tea. Very cute. And it looks like it is berry sage tea. It is caffeine free. And we got not one, not two, but six packs of it. So that's always kind of nice. So a lot of the times in a monthly book box from down the rabbit hole, the tea is just sort of a nice bonus. But in this case, because there are nine gifts, this was included as one of them. So let me go ahead and put that off to the side. Next we go to page 21. So having nine gifts in a span of about 200 pages, you're turning two pages with a sticky note quite a bit. So let's see what this one is if I can remember. Okay. So there are no Japanese secretaries and no red tea. So he's somewhere else now. There's barely any space in the room. The walls are made of fiberboard. This is what he's thinking when El Gringo hands him a brochure and says, Here, Tejo, read this, before explaining to Egmont that he's exporting blood from a special lot of impregnated females. He clarifies that the blood has special properties. The brochure's re large red letters say that the procedure reduces the number of unproductive hours of the merchandise. He thinks, merchandise. Another word that obscures the world, right? So we do what we have to, right? We refer to animals, living beings as meat um, and saying that that is their purpose in life and that's how we distance ourselves and justify it. I, I am someone, I'm a carnivore, I admit, but I definitely, I had moments where I thought about being a vegetarian again in this. All right, so this is one of those paper gifts that I was talking about where for me, it doesn't necessarily, like, it's not something I'm going to use. It's just a brochure, like it's a, you know, they mocked up a brochure. This is special properties, comes from the best quality merchandise, right? And then we've got, like, they went ahead and talked about all the properties of this blood that they would be harvesting from these specimens. So, so you know, I, that's a little creative touch, but for me, that wasn't, like, necessarily a very valuable gift necessarily. All right, let's go ahead and move on to gift number three, which was on page 28. All right, so now Marcos is back at home and someone is clapping and calling his name. Hello, Senor Tejo? Yes, that's me. I've got a gift from El Gringo. Can you sign here? He signs without thinking. The man hands him an envelope and then walks over to the truck. He opens the back door, goes in and takes out a female. What is that? It's a female FGP. Take her back, okay? Now. The man stands there not knowing what to do and looks at him confused. No one would turn down a gift like this. The sale of the female would amount to a small fortune. The man tugs on the rope around her neck because he doesn't know what to do. The female moves submissively. I can't. If I take her back, El Gringo will get rid of me. The man tightens the rope and holds out the other end, but he doesn't reach for it. And the man throws the rope to the ground, takes a few quick steps, gets to the truck, and drives off. So he has been given a gift of a female specimen or merchandise or a head. It's like giving someone a side of a cow, I guess, or, you know, sending someone steaks. It's 
it's like that but this is live merchandise and FGP stands for first generation pure which means they have been bred and raised in captivity and some of the scenes you guys of these places where they are bred and kept in captivity and how they are kept docile it is it is the stuff of nightmares so we have yet another paper gift that came in an envelope and then from there on out we get more um, substantial gifts so this is another sort of like bringing the book to life but a paper gift that I'm not gonna hold on to necessarily certificate of authenticity so this is our FGP that has been delivered to Marcos and now he doesn't know what to do with it right all right moving on to number four which was on page 37 see if I can remember what this one is oh so he goes to this woman who is a butcher and she's just very methodical and very good at her job they like kind of had a weird relationship in the past Spanel signs the forms and takes a sip of wine it's 10 in the morning she offers him a cigarette and lights it for him while they smoke she says I don't get why a person's smile is considered attractive when someone smiles they're showing their skeleton and he realizes he's never seen her smile and that was I thought that was kind of an interesting idea because that that is true so here is gift number four um, but yeah we are showing our skeleton which usually we keep pretty well hidden because it's um you don't want your bones to be showing most of the time so we got a limited edition pin which is definitely something that's kind of big in book boxes to do this one is a double uh, pin so two of those and it says it's from tender is the flesh it says show me your skeleton and it's just got this creepy skull and it's kind of like looking up with like red eyes so good for Halloween kind of a weird one to have but I do think it's kind of fun when she does um, add things to the boxes that are you know limited edition and have been created so there's some like not red eyes necessarily but just like blood spatter on the skull itself so kind of creepy but yes Halloween that seems appropriate to say show me your skeleton which just means smile then uh, number five is on page 87 this was a pretty good one I think let's see number five. Oh, okay so he has the specimen and he actually winds up naming her and kind of humanizing her a little bit more um, but he doesn't he decides not to keep her in the barn necessarily he lies down very close to her but doesn't touch her he feels the heat of her body her slow and unhurried breath he moves a little closer and begins to breathe with her rhythm slowly slower still he can smell her she has a strong smell because she's dirty but he likes it thinks of the intoxicating scent of jasmine wild and sharp vibrant his breath quickens something about this excites him this closeness this possibility so kind of creepy but you know men's urges and so we have another box I was like uh oh what are we gonna get here but this kind of reminded me of the perfume box that we got before we got a candle and so she has made a candle but it's kind of a weird candle scent name it is female FGP which hopefully just smells like Jasmine it says honeysuckle and Jasmine so kind of creepy it is sparkly and lavender kind of a weird color honestly kind of like a gray lavender but it does smell like jasmine so I'm okay with that I might stick a different sticker over it just because I don't want someone to be in my house and be like what is female FGP and what are you reading Ooh, but that's that candle smells nice so it's one of those ones where I'm gonna have to keep it because uh, I'm not gonna gift that to anyone else that would be real weird okay number six is on page 103 this was a good one so because the government has convinced everyone that animals have this disease they have eradicated all of the animals it's very sad everyone's had to get rid of all of their pets and people remain afraid of animals um, so Marcos has a sister and she is very what much someone who follows the rules to a certain degree and they tell people the government tells people to use an umbrella so that a bird doesn't poop on your head because that could kill you yes I know so she he is leaving her house they don't get along very well um so she he is leaving so great to see you Mar marquitos take this umbrella do me a favor because he came without an umbrella and he's like i don't need an umbrella that's all bs that isn't true the government just told you that you don't need an umbrella and she's like you need an umbrella i can't believe you're out like after, like without an umbrella so you see the parallels to you see the parallels right i, I mean there's a lot of them so 
says he opens the umbrella and leaves without answering. Before he gets into his car, he sees a trash can. He tosses the open umbrella into it. His sister is watching from the door. She closes it slowly while lowering her head. So this was, you've probably guessed, an umbrella it just came wrapped up in this mailer bag honestly you guys all the gifts didn't fit into this box so they did have to have an outer mailer bag but I actually thought this was a really good gift I have plenty of umbrellas but I thought this was really pretty with this like teal background and the cherry blossoms and then it's actually a little bit darker on the interior and then it's got this like bright um, bright blue and yellow handle but I thought this was a really pretty umbrella so I'm stoked about this for me this was was definitely a gift that I will use and keep and I thought this was well uh, like you know a substantial gift that seemed like worth the cost of this limited edition edition box all right we have page uh, 115 has gift number seven 115 so luckily it makes it a little bit easier usually to turn to the pages let's see if I remember what this gift was all about okay so um, he comes across, he's, he likes to go and visit this old zoo and read like the placards about the animals that are no longer there. And he actually winds up in the snake house and he comes across um, a litter of puppies. And it's really cute because he like watches the puppies for a while. Eventually they chase him away. And then later on the book, the puppies don't do well, but he enjoys um, interacting with the puppies. He's not afraid of them like so many other people would have been. Um, they kind of, he kind of gets chased away eventually. So that's what happens on this page. But just because, um, um, I want to read a page or two earlier actually because it's this like sweet scene where he discovers the puppies with the puppies he loses track of time they play at attacking him try to catch the branches he moves through the air they nip at his hands with their tiny teeth and it almost tickles he grabs their heads and shakes them carefully as if his hand were the jaw of a monstrous beast who was after them he tugs gently on their tails when they whimper and bark he does too they lick his hands all four of the puppies are males and he like names them and kind of plays with him and so then when he does eventually run away um, he catches his breath and looks at them sadly because he can't help them he can't feed them he can't wash them can't take care of them or hug them and he counts all six dogs so the mom and dad dog they're scrawny probably malnourished he's not afraid though he knows they could tear him apart if he got one out of the car if he got out of the car but he can't stop looking at them so he's just kind of remembering like how it used to be he had dogs that he had to get rid of it was very sad so um, we had this bigger gift that came in this bigger mailer bag and it's not a puppy, unfortunately, but it is a bag, which I hadn't actually opened up, but it's just got puppies all over it, little like bulldogs, which I thought was kind of a cute um, example of, you know, even if the book is kind of gruesome, the gifts aren't necessarily, right? So it's just this kind of like vinyl little tote bag with all these little puppies on it. And we've got these like big straps. You could probably put this over your shoulder, but it does have a little bit of a gusset on the bottom. You can kind of see there's like corners. So it's more of a book bag, but yeah, it's like kind of this soft vinyl. So it's nice because you could wipe it clean. It does have a zipper closure, which you guys know I do like that in my tote bag. Um, nothing too fancy on the inside but you know just a cute little bag that you can wipe clean and you can take back and forth to the library or to school so I thought that was cute because it was just puppies all right we have two more gifts to go one for number eight was on page 150 we're getting really close you guys so on page 150 what did we get oh, okay so this is something that's really weird. So um, for the most part, you can only get special meat if it's been like bred in captivity. That's how they make the distinction. Like if it had a first and last name, that means it was a human and you don't eat that unless you're a scavenger. But there is this guy who's really sick and he's come up with this idea where people like to hunt heads. But there is a way for celebrities who have um, fallen off the radar or who are in great debt they can put themselves up to be hunted for a certain amount of time and if they survive that he will pay their debts but otherwise these crazy evil hunters will come and chase them and see if they can actually kill them and then eat them in a like gourmet dinner I know it's crazy so he happens to see the end of a hunt where a former celebrity does get chased down and so they're at this dinner and they're all congratulating one another Guerrero Iraola gives them a look that restores order and asks a question. How was Ulysses Vokes hunted? That was the celebrity. I caught him off guard in what appeared to be a hiding spot. He had the bad luck of moving just as I walked by, the hunter says. Right, with your bionic ear, no one gets away, says the man who shot the pregnant female. Lisandrito is a master, Guerrero. 
Iraola says, the last word in English, like all the Nunez Guevara's, the family's got the best hunters in the country. He points his fork full of flesh to the hunter and says, next time Orlet has a celebrity for us, leave him for me, kid. It's a clear threat and Lisandrito lowers his eyes. Guerrero Iraola raises his glass and they all toast Lisandrito and his lineage of first class hunters. How many days did he have left, folks? Someone asked Orlet. Today was his last day. He had five hours left. They all applaud and clink their glasses, except for him. He's thinking of Jasmine, which is the name of his, um, his, his that he has at home. So then we got this, uh, what did we get? Oh, it was in here. Sorry guys, I have to go quickly because then we have one more. We got this glass tumbler, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> this is what it says, if you guys can't read it. It says, when I read about the evils of drinking, I gave up reading. Ha ha, or when I read about the evils of drinking, I gave up reading, which was not really good for a bookish box because nobody's gonna give up reading. But I won't read you the last page because what they did is they just gave us a nice palette cleanser for gift number nine. They gave us some white sage because I feel like I definitely needed to uh, use this as a after book energy cleanser and it is premium quality, hand harvested and hand tied in California, dragon's blood sage. Very welcome after this intense book, which does have a bit of a surprise ending, so that's why I didn't want to read it to all of you. But if you have read this, let me know what you thought about it. I thought the gifts for the most part were good, except for the paper gifts. I'm glad I read the book, but I am also glad that it is done. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you soon in my next unboxing.